Hi, I'm Ruth. I'm a PhD student at the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, and our exhibit is Virus Wars. Being a scientist is a great job. Um, there's quite a lot of variety because we use a lot of different kinds of approaches and different experiments to try and work out what it is that we're trying to understand. There's a lot of teamwork as well. So we need to discuss the results and plan your experiments together, and that's an element that I hadn't really realised how important that was, and it's something I really enjoy. I was inspired to become a scientist because I liked biology at school, but to be honest, I hadn't really thought about working in a science lab until I'd, I'd been on some lab placements at university and realised this was something I actually really like. If I wasn't in biology, I think I'd quite like to be a paleontologist. Maybe it's just a hangover from loving the Jurassic Park films, but I think dinosaurs are fascinating. The best thing about being a scientist is that you never can predict the results from your experiment. So when you do experiments at school, your teacher always knows what's supposed to happen because it's been done thousands of times by different people before. And either you get the right answer and it's very nice, or you screw something up and it doesn't work. But when we do experiments, we're never sure what we're going to see. And it can make it kind of difficult. That's a challenge. You're never totally sure how to interpret things. And then you have to plan more experiments and really try and work out what's going on. It can be quite mysterious. But it's what makes it fun and exciting. If I could go back in time, I'd like to meet Rosalind Franklin. She was a woman who had a big part in the discovery of the structure of DNA. But her role in it wasn't really acknowledged until after her death. I'd like to ask her about the challenges of being a woman in science back in the 50s. But I'd also like to talk to her about how much better things have got. Although we're not really there yet, there are still some extra challenges if you're a woman in science. I think she'd be amazed to discover how much pioneering women like her have really made things better now. In my free time, I like to go to gigs and go to clubs. I really love music. Um, I like going to music festivals as well. And I like doing yoga and just hanging out with my friends. The first science experiment I remember doing is growing beans in jam jars at primary school. I found that really exciting for some reason. <laughs> the advice I'd give to someone who's interested in science is to read science blogs. I find them really interesting because it's a really approachable and understandable way to find out about exciting new discoveries. So obviously you have to learn the basics of science in school, but the really exciting stuff is always the new stuff. And blogs are a great way to find out about that. The discovery or invention I really couldn't live without has to be my mobile phone. I'm sure it's a bit of a cliche, but for me it's really true. I'm, I'm so disorganised and I'm always late. I think if I couldn't just have instant contact with my friends, I would, I'd probably never see them. I think the most important discovery that's yet to be found is probably a preventative treatment or a cure or something for Alzheimer's disease and other dementias. I think it's one of the biggest problems we've got at the moment, that there are more and more people really suffering with these terrible diseases, and at the moment there's really so little we can do.